Alexa, good morning. Turning on your shower. From the coffee maker to the front porch, the floors to the counters. You have four items on your shopping list. And the mesh Wi-Fi connecting it all, Amazon is everywhere in the home and in this smart home lab we visited in Seattle. In this lab alone, we have more than 45 devices. There is a smart fridge uh, that is connected to Alexa. Uh, we have our uh, thermostat, our ring doorbell and cameras, vacuum, the indoor quality monitor, uh, the TV. And with its recent offer to buy Roomba smart vacuum maker iRobot for 1.7 billion, Amazon's showing no signs of stopping. Although the Federal Trade Commission is reviewing whether the deal would violate antitrust law before allowing the takeover. At this point, with its acquisition of iRobot, with its presence in streaming, with its ring cameras, with its Echo smart speaker, Amazon can basically do everything but smell what you're having for dinner. Alexa on the beat. The station, dance party favorites on Amazon Music. Amazon takes its responsibility to customers and privacy incredibly seriously. And if we were to acquire iRobot or any other company, that would not change. Ahead of Amazon's annual smart home event, we talked to the VP of privacy to find out what really happens to all the data collected by Amazon's devices, and sat down with the head of smart home to hear the strategy behind Amazon's race to dominate the internet of things. It all started less than a decade ago when Amazon introduced its first Echo speaker in 2014. It was a runaway success, selling 5 million devices by the time Google introduced its first smart speaker in 2016. We didn't think about smart home on day one, uh, but we quickly learned from customers that they wanted to use their voice uh, for more uh, than entertainment. Lighting was first, with Amazon adding Alexa activation to an early smart light bulb, the Hue, by Philips, where Maria Koopmans was CMO before she joined Amazon to lead Smart Home three years ago. The 300 million devices are connected to uh, Alexa today. That's up from uh, 200 million less than a few years ago. And uh, so the growth is rapid. Amazon was the first major player to the smart home market, and it remains the biggest and fastest growing. It controls 11.5% of the U.S. market, up 15.5% from the year before, with runner-up Google at 6.5% and Samsung coming in a close third. And now, owning a smart home device has become mainstream, with the market ballooning to nearly $113 billion in 2021, up 20% from the year before. If you asked me three or four years ago what the adoption rate was, it was hovering around about 12%. During the pandemic, we saw that rocket to almost half of American households that have a Wi-Fi network at home have at least one smart home device. Adam Wright leads smart home research at data firm IDC. He says his home is filled with 185 Alexa-enabled devices. Users that have a smart speaker, more than 60% of those users say that, that that device itself has led them to buy another smart home device. Amazon also launched its Alexa-enabled Fire TV streaming stick in 2014, as it grew its entertainment arm with Prime Video. Then in 2015, Amazon opened up its voice platform to outside developers, and the number of Alexa-enabled gadgets skyrocketed, reaching 140,000 today. And how many of these devices that are Alexa-enabled are actually owned by Amazon? Very few. <laughs> Very few. Amazon doesn't break out device sales and earnings, but with a string of big acquisitions, it's certainly expanding its collection. In 2018, Amazon purchased video doorbell maker Ring for a billion dollars, just three months after acquiring home security company Blink for 90 million. A year later, it bought Eero for 97 million, a mesh Wi-Fi system that can connect it all. But these devices have to work, and my entire smart home experience is irked frequently every day with these devices just not working. I think we've made great strides, but the value of the smart home to me personally remains uncertain. Now, Amazon has offered $1.7 billion to acquire iRobot with its room mapping Roombas, a deal that analysts say isn't really about the sale of the vacuums themselves. It's very difficult to make a lot of margins on the hardware and the device itself, but they have just acquired a, a massive data set which can help them uh, in the aggregate better understand the floor plans and the mapping of people's homes. 
20 different privacy and labor groups, including Sarah Miller's American Economic Liberties Project, have sent a letter to the FTC asking it to block the deal, citing concerns about privacy and Amazon's growing dominance of the smart home market. The FTC is requesting more information from both Amazon and iRobot before making a decision. It has a camera in the front, which is a little bit unsettling. It can tell what you already have in your house, who's in your household, what types of things might you want to add to that, right? They can target advertising on the Amazon platform in that way. In response to privacy concerns raised by the pending deal, iRobot CEO told CNBC in a statement, we know that customers welcome us into their homes because they trust that our products will help them do more and that we will respect their information. We take that trust seriously. Once we are required by Amazon, our commitment to customer data and privacy will remain. Privacy and security are a huge, huge area of investment for us and will continue to be. Similar concerns were raised in 2018 when Amazon bought Ring, where Leila Ruhi was president for four years before joining Amazon in April in a new role, VP of Privacy and Trust. Earning the trust of our customers is incredibly difficult. And if we don't earn that trust, they're simply not going to use our devices. And that is not what we want. And Roombas aren't the only smart home devices that can map the inside of our homes. Smart lights like the Philips Hue have a new feature that will allow them to turn on or off automatically by detecting your presence in a room. Essentially, Wi-Fi strength is evaluated to create a 3D image of the house and those disturbing the Wi-Fi around it. Meanwhile, Amazon is developing its own robotic household monitor called Astro. It's made for checking in on specific rooms, children, or aging loved ones, not unlike the dog in the futuristic smart home of the Jetsons. Yippee! He did it! Astro captured the burglar! Astro captured the burglar! To track your shopping habits, to track your movements, to track even where things are placed in your home, what's going on outside your front door, they can create this incredibly complex, detailed data profile that they can then use to kind of expand and grow their own business and through that process to push out competitors that simply could never surveil you with that degree of sophistication. We are incredibly thoughtful about the data that we use and our focus has always really been to use that data on behalf of the customer and to improve the services and the experiences that we know our customers enjoy on a daily basis. Amazon's alleged anti-competitive practices are being challenged by an antitrust bill being considered by Congress and in lawsuits filed by the attorney generals of D.C. and now California. As Amazon's list of devices expands, so does the amount of data it can gather, allowing it to improve the capabilities of its devices. The smart thermostat will have a hunch that everybody's out of the home, so why should it be running at 70? Let's lower it down a little bit. And it does that automatically on your behalf. Koopmans told us about Alexa hunches. Essentially, the data collected by all your devices teaches Alexa your routines. Thermostat is keeping the temperature between 71 and 75. How does it know or have a hunch that there is no one left in the home? And uh, uh, that happens through a, a variety of different data points that we get. You're not using devices actively, for example. Um, it also is uh, with geocaching on your phone. Uh, we know that you've left. Another new data-enabled capability is Follow on the Echo Show 15 that came out last year. Following is now on. Amazon can also now create a visual ID for each Echo user with facial recognition software. So for example, if you live in a household with multiple people um, and it's you that's going into the kitchen in the morning, you might have a different routine and different music and you know different news feed that you're interested in. And Amazon copped a bit of flack for that, right? People were, were, were raising the idea of how does this become a major intrusion into privacy in the home but it was very rarely juxtaposed against the same technology that's on our smartphone uh, every day. Amazon also says it's easy to delete visual ID history. Same for videos from Ring and audio from Echo. You can even set a schedule uh, to have it auto-deleted, or you can just ask Alexa to uh, delete your data at any point in time as well. Someone is at the front door. Still, the default setting for these devices is not to delete the data, but rather to allow Amazon to use it to inform its growing smart home ecosystem, albeit in an anonymized aggregate format. 
how we build, design, and deliver every single device, feature, and service has privacy built in from the ground up. And we work really hard to keep our customers' information safe and to provide them with transparency and control over their experiences. This uh, device has a, has a feature for that, which is a slider where you can cover uh, the camera. But video is crucial to ring doorbells, credited with catching thieves and even saving lives. One of our customers had a, I believe it was a heart attack um, on his front porch, and the family was able to see this on the ring video doorbell and alert authorities. The latest ring has an option for two-way video encryption, although it's turned off by default. On the Neighbors app, users can voluntarily post or provide video to law enforcement for active investigations. But Amazon has also been criticized for sharing Ring Video doorbell footage with law enforcement without user consent. There's legal process. Um, and so our legal process happens through our legal team. We understand the absolutely sensitive nature of videos, and we do our utmost to ensure that we are being incredibly thoughtful in how we respond to legal requests and protecting the customer's interests. On Echoes, the microphone can be muted. And despite tailored ads fed to you after a related conversation at home, Amazon says no, Alexa is not always listening. There's absolutely not a room of people that is monitoring our customers and their behaviors. Um, no. In other parts of its business, namely grocery, Amazon sells the data gathered at its Whole Foods and Fresh stores to brands looking to gain valuable insight into how consumers shop their products something it says will not happen in its smart home business. Instead, Amazon says all this data will help devices work in unison for what it calls ambient intelligence, where routines are automatically started and Alexa has hunches. Imagine that you are uh, at work, you're getting in your car and you're driving home. Alexa knows that you're in the neighborhood. It will turn the lights on. It will set the temperature at the right setting. Another example is this indoor air quality monitor that can automatically turn on a fan or air purifier. The indoor air quality is good, with an air quality score of 96. Amazon says more than 30% of experiences are initiated by Alexa instead of humans. And Amazon's ownership of mesh Wi-Fi system Eero can boost the strength of the connection between all these devices. The latest devices with Eero allow you to connect up uh, more than 75 devices on the 6 Plus. It enables these smart devices to be set up through frustration-free setup. That basically means you basically screw in the light bulb and it works. And then there's Amazon Sidewalk, a shared network allowing devices to connect to each other so it's always on, beyond the reach of home Wi-Fi and even if your internet goes out. It can use just a, a little bit of bandwidth from customers that have opted in to the sidewalk network. And so, for example, if you have Ring Smart Lighting, you know, typically you'd have to be within Bluetooth range for the lights to be able to turn on and off using your app. With something like Sidewalk, it can go up to a mile distance. And soon, Alexa, Siri, Google, and more may play better together, too. An alliance of different device makers, including Amazon, Apple, and Google, is developing a protocol called the Matter Standard that would allow devices to work across platforms instead of only answering to one voice assistant. We believe that the home will always be a heterogeneous environment, meaning you will have many different brands, many different devices from many different companies in your home. What remains to be seen is whether the Internet of Things will ever be a highly profitable or high-functioning part of Amazon's vast business portfolio. Hmm, I don't know that. <laughs>